What's up guys? How's it going? Cloudy Journey here. I just made a video today, but I have even more time off to continue recording. And it was a big week on my poll list. Uh, I haven't had many big weeks lately because I've cut back so far. But I guess last week hardly anything came out. And then this week you had the big, uh, a bunch of the new Marvel books come out, which I didn't even get any of. But uh, just everything, I got a lot of stuff that came out. A couple of Brian K. Vaughn books. Two Brian K. Vaughn books in a week. I'll take it. $2.99 books to boot. Gotta love it. So let's just jump into it. I'm going to give my quick thoughts on all these books because uh, it was a really good week and there's lots of things to say. I'm excited. I haven't done a rum in reviews in a while. This is rum. So let's get the party started. All right. Secret Wars number six is finally back. I've been really, really loving Secret Wars. I've only read a few events in my life and uh, Secret Wars I've definitely been enjoying. Really well done. Love uh, the whole concept of it. Uh, I think a lot of it came because I sort of was, when I heard all these books were coming out, I did some research and really understood sort of what the basis of the book was. So I think having that base understanding ahead of time really helped because it is pretty heavy and confusing and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I didn't read any of the Avengers books leading up to it, but I still have been really liking it. It's the first really good Doctor Doom story I've ever read because uh, I haven't read a lot of Fantastic Four. After this, I heard Hickman's run was really good on Fast Fantastic Four, and clearly he gets the characters and everything, so I, I really want to go back and read some of those. I think his series is called FF. Uh, but yeah, this has been really great. It is really disappointing that they dropped the ball and they didn't get it done in time for uh, the all-new, all-different Marvel launch, because that's the whole point, is this is leading up to this new monumental thing, smashing these universes together, doing a little mix-up. First time they've really done something like that for years and years and years, if not ever. Uh, so it, it is a pretty big deal, this event, and I feel I totally dropped the ball by not getting it done and now releasing all these books. Like It really, uh, for a book that I think is really well written, it really throws that under the bus. But that said, it's probably the artist's fault who couldn't keep up whatever as well. Uh, I can't blame him. It's, he does have a really nice detailed style. It's a really beautifully drawn book. Uh, but it's uh, not, it, it, it takes a long time to get this stuff out. So maybe they're just a little overzealous thinking they could do it in uh, two or three months or whatever it was. But uh, what's been going on, Dr. Doom uh, is trying to figure out where these rebels are. Because like the 616 guys and the Ultimate Universe guys had each made a life raft. One full of villains, one full of heroes. And they sort of popped up and they're all trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, it does get a little confusing when you think about like, uh, cause Brooklyn or Manhattan is two universes in one with the 616 and, the and the ultimate universe. So there's those characters who are there, but they were sort of built within this universe that Dr. Doom built. It gets really sort of complicated and confusing, but somehow it works. Like it makes sense to me as I'm reading it. I'm never lost. I really like a lot of the elements. He has the different villains and heroes sort of as governors over different regions and things and different alliances happening. Everybody, they are villains, so they still want to overthrow Doom. They don't really like bowing down to Doom, but he has the power of the Beyonders, so he's pretty, uh, pretty hardcore these days. Um, so a lot of little things. His uh, daughter, not really his daughter, uh, is sort of starting to question what's going on. Everybody, the sort of scenes are are coming apart here as uh, Dr. Doom's trying to hold everything together, but it just doesn't fit. Uh, there's a great metaphor. The Spider-Mans are in here, uh, Peter Parker and Miles Morales, and they talk about a puzzle piece, that or a puzzle that's kind of forced together that just isn't meant to be together that way, and it, it's forcing itself apart, and it's just not meant to hold. So uh, it's been really exciting, really liking where it's going. Would love to see uh, this finish well. So I haven't even picked up any of the new books. I think I'm going to get the Daredevil one. Um, I might. I that uh, Jason Aaron Doctor Strange book looked really good, but I heard there's some spoilers in some of this. So I might just hold off on that stuff until uh, later. We'll see. All right, first Brian K. Vaughn book. We stand on guard. Beautiful cover there. I love the symbolism of sort of uh, the sort of weaker creature fighting tooth and nail claw and tooth and claw against this uh way more powerful robot uh it's something that actually happens in the book as well as uh sort of beautiful symbolism and just the look on this animal's face it's like you see in like a nature special where he's just doing everything to fight for his life uh continues to kick ass this book it's sort of fallen into the the military 
um, Rebels type story, which I've seen so many times. And like he, he's Brian K. Vaughn, so he keeps it fresh enough and the characters are interesting enough that it's okay. But I did think this was the weakest issue so far. Uh, still a lot better than a lot of books I've read, but uh, for this series, just a little bit more of just fighting, uh, different people being captured and things like that. Nothing really substantial happening uh, besides sort of another fight. So yeah, uh, art looks great. I think this guy who he brought back, um, uh, was it Steve Scross? How do you pronounce that? Scross? Uh, he's really figured it out now. That first issue, uh, the faces were a little bit off and everything it looked a little amateurish, but really nailed it. Has it dialed in now? Or I'm just used to it. I don't know. But yeah, we stand on guard, continuing to be rad. All right, cluster number eight. This was an Ed Brisson book I was reading. I dropped it number seven and then found out it was ending at eight. So I decided to just grab the last one. And it, it was one of the better issues. Happy to see sort of how everything was resolved and ended. Problem with this, again, it was another like military rebels story. It's basically uh, orange meet, is the new black meets Avatar. I felt like there was a lot of like, uh, it's about this girl who's sort of rich governor's daughter who's arrested, thrown to this planet and the... The, mil the jail is sort of being used as a military to take over this planet. So there's a rebellion and stuff, as I said before. Uh, maybe why that Brian... There's a fly freaking my face. Why that Brian K. Vaughn story was feeling a little familiar to me because I had been reading eight issues of that with this. And I don't know what it was. It's so funny how there's just certain subtle things that storytellers do that get you intrigued. And I try to identify, like, why do I like this one so much but not this one? Like, there's nothing in this book that's really bad there was just nothing that really gripped me enough to really get passionate and care about the characters i think maybe that's it you really have to invest in the characters early or just it feels like work uh seeing these things happen to them that you just aren't invested and in, don't care about so cluster was not unfortunately that great although fun sci-fi book and stuff uh i do like ed brisson uh, i'm sorry this wasn't as good as i wanted it to be but hey that's how it goes sometimes uh, Space Riders, number four, just hilarious, sort of heavy metal, psychedelic type book. Uh, really funny, really out there, uh, balls to the walls, ridiculous. Uh, probably better if you're like a weed smoker to smoke weed or something when you read these books. But um, I'm glad it's over. Like, I real, I did enjoy it. I thought it was hilarious. It had space whales, which I love, and uh, beautiful colors. Uh, great funny characters, things like that. But it's kind of a book. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. They didn't really do that much unique in each issue. It wasn't really, the story didn't really go too far. It was just some interesting visuals and things like that and fun action. Uh, so four issues is perfect for me. Uh, wrap this one up and I can get some more stuff. Copperhead number 10. I guess it was like uh, a little bit late, uh, which I haven't. I've noticed this book's actually for a, a, like independent book come on time pretty pretty regularly i didn't have any issues with it wraps up the second arc of this story well done more westerny type stuff another book that like i like but i want it to be better and i don't know why i don't like it as much there's just something about the characters uh they feel sort of like caricatures to me like i've seen all these characters before it's like okay you have the the rough tough like weaker physically weaker deputy who's gonna like show her show the world how she's the boss uh, not the deputy, the sheriff, and the sheriff, sort of the underdog, really big bruiser tank type of guy uh, who you sort of, but he's lovable and sort of very warm, even though he's hardcore. It's just sort of those familiar characters, and they don't really do enough to set them apart for me from characters I've seen before. So for me, like, I like the story. I've also had issues with how the artist draws action and stuff. It feels really static a lot of the time. Uh, he doesn't do any like lines really want to sh show speed and movement things like that so uh i had issues there but overall it's a fun sort of space western there's a bunch of these coming out at once uh i enjoyed it i think this is gonna be my jumping off point though as uh, this arc so done and i think they're taking a break for a couple months all right old man logan number five so i believe this is the last part of the old man logan series i was very disappointed with this series a lot of people really loved it so good i'm glad they did i really love the original old man logan story and what they tried to do was sort of something similar throwing logan across uh, into different regions and things like that meeting different characters i just felt there wasn't enough action for me 
there wasn't a lot that was happening. There's a lot of discussion and dialogue and relationships with like he meets two different Emma Frost at different times. And I just, that stuff bored me. I just want to see freaking old man Logan roaming around kicking ass, like not putting up with any shit. Like it's so, it seemed to me, it's almost easy to write this book. And Bendis just, he went way too into dialogue and discussion for me. What I wanted from this book was old man Logan waking up. What the fuck is going on? Where am I? I'm going to figure this out. Start walking. People picking fights with them and just dominating people as he goes. Kicking ass. Figuring things out. And sort of slowly putting it together before he got back. So uh, you kind of had a bit of that. Like he fell into the zom Marvel Zombies world. And they just I think a lot of it was the art, art style. Really didn't give me a good sense of what was going on. It was sort of that dreamlike style. Which for me I just didn't like it. Uh, so in this he sort of, it, it, I guess the idea with this book ultimately is it's the return of Wolverine who's been, who died. And now this is going to be the new Wolverine. So it's him uh, engaging with the new X-Men. He meets uh, his son or other Wolverine's son, Dakin. And uh, it's kind of, there's a sort of vision that he's going to somehow lead uh, the attack on Doc Doom eventually. Uh, but also they kind of randomly, he's having this vision with... Um, with uh, not Scarlet Witch, Emma Frost, and he, they're kind of discussing something within this dream world. It's all white, and then Flash, he's in regular New York, which I thought he was already in, and you see Spider-Man flying by. It doesn't really explain how he gets there or what just happened. It's just so I never I don't like books when I don't have a sense of what's going on. It just bugs me. Uh, so I was I was really disappointed in this. I would have loved to see it, and I I wasn't gonna pick up the new one, but it's Jeff Lemire, and I like Jeff Lemire. Uh, my Canadian brother, so I might have to pick up the next Old Man Logan book. This is why we're suckers, guys. This is why Marvel keeps kicking ass, even though they keep doing stuff we all say we don't like, because we get sucked in. We want the good story, the potential. Uh, what's going on here? Battle World number five also. Number four, I don't know. I haven't read, seen too many people reading these books. I, to me, this one seemed more like one of the more fun ideas from Battle World. Basically, it's just random characters thrown together across Battle World. So sort of short stories from Battle World. So they're always split into two or sometimes three, I think, the, uh, different stories. This one had two Silver Surfer stories. Uh, I'm even going to open this one up. I like the first story I really liked. It had a very like Mobius feel to the art uh, with the like lines and everything. And he teams up with Juggernaut and uh, they go on a hunt and he like meets up with Galactus. He's in this other world, uh, this sort of ancient world. And there's Galactus, the ancient monster. Just a beautiful book and uh, really well drawn. It's sort of uh, wrapped up a little quick for me. There's a lot of setup and then the like final battle was really fast. But um, yeah, really beautiful. And then there was a Maestro versus Silver Sh Surfer story. And I guess, I don't know anything about Maestro. I don't know what his story is or whatever. But I guess they were on the Defenders together. Is Maestro like an evolved form of the Hulk or something? I don't know. I didn't have a lot of like investment in that relationship, even though they seem to have once been friends. Uh, that one was sort of lacking for me. But the first story was good. So yeah, that was enjoyable. Lastly, Paper Girls, which I never would have, whoops, I never would have picked this book up. Uh, I only randomly, Brian K. Vaughn, he sometimes takes over this random Twitter account and he's really smart and entertaining on Twitter. So whenever that happens, sort of I pay attention and he had mentioned he had Paper Girls coming out and uh, yeah, really like this book. Uh, Sleepy Reader 666 commented that it felt like a Steven Spielberg story. Totally agree. Uh, it was, it kind of had that E.T. I love when, when writers get kids written really well. Like, uh, if you guys ever watch like the Sandlot and stuff like that, like when you get kids figured out right, uh, you just get some great stories because it brings you back to how you used to think, uh, the world you see. And it's great because it's like these four girls, they deliver paper in the morning, uh, early morning. Uh, it's the day after Hallow or after Halloween. So that morning. And they're all nervous because there's crazy kids out and bullies. And you see these older kids and there is that real sense of danger, even though it's just a teenager. But to these girls, like that's dangerous and scary and you're by your own and they will hassle you and they'll cause you problems. So uh, as Brian K. Vaughn does, he just kicked ass uh, with the writing. He sets up these characters. You, they just have a quick little moment, each of them. 
Like you get who that character is, where they're coming from, and they're likable. Like you have a really uh, the first girl is really religious and like worried about heaven and hell and sinning and stuff like that. But she's not unlikable. She's like even though she has these moral hardcore moral standards, she doesn't like rub in people's faces and like seem to judge people. She's just still really likable, which is a hard thing to do. Like it's really easy to be like the judgmental church girl. You see that kind of stuff a lot. So. Uh, it starts out sort of just a fun sort of kids story and then there's this sort of uh, sci-fi element that gets thrown into it. I won't tell you what it is, but um, yeah, really great book. Excited to see where this is. And check this out. I don't know if you can see how thick this thing is. This thing is like, must be 30 or 40 pages. I didn't count, but $2.99. So Man, friggin' Brian K. Vaughn, he's just got my heart these days, man. I think he's one of these writers. I have a few writers I, like, implicitly trust, uh, and Brian K. Vaughn is one of them. He just, whatever, how he writes connects with me for whatever reason. I'm sure you guys all have your own writer. It's like Mark Wade, Brian K. Vaughn. It's nice to really have those guys in your back pocket so when a random book comes out, you can pick that up and get excited about it and get on board. Uh, news about that, uh, if you guys don't know, Mark Wade and Chris Samney, same Daredevil team, have picked up uh, Black Widow they're going to be starting, so they're going to be doing a Black Widow series. I don't care that much about Black Widow personally, but it's Mark Wade, so I'll probably pick it up, and I bet you I'll start liking Black Widow. I didn't care that much about Daredevil before I started reading Mark Wade, Daredevil, so that's how good he is, in my opinion. Okay, that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to finish my rum. Thanks for listening to my ramblings, and we'll catch you later. Peace.